have we done so far? This is this is technically our 14th meetup, and it's uh, good to have you along here and playing a little bit of Splatoon 2. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, every single month since the game's uh, since the game's release. I could be uh, could be mistaken about that, but I think it started a little bit after the games came out, but just a little bit. Fair enough. Yeah, the Switch meetups. Gotcha. Almost. Just uh, maybe uh, maybe taking uh, before the idea of Switch versus was conceptualized. Did we uh, were we doing this sort of thing? Mm -hmm. But uh, under the Switch versus branding, certainly uh, been going on for ju just under a year now. But it's been a partnership that's been really appreciated and and uh, once again thanks uh nate da dragon warrior down in virginia for uh making this whole thing happen and of course uh just uh moosh for putting all this together and for muddy for joining me on commentary oh, yeah, me it's just yeah absolutely on, man. i'm not that important no dude you're uh well you're the uh you're the one who's going to be dropping knowledge on the stream and this game has changed a lot mm -hmm. since the game's release and the most notable change i would say uh at least in my opinion my estimation would be the uh, the main weapon damage up that was missing from the that was missing from the game for so long, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden gets patched in. Yeah, so they uh, took away cold blooded and bomb defense um, and merged them into one, and then they got to add another, another main power up ability, um, which is basically the equivalent of damage up for as far as you, you know it goes. Certain weapons use it a little bit differently, um, so you got kind of got to look into that and see what your weapon uses it for. Um, but yeah, it's a big big change. Yeah, and obviously certain weapons are going to get buffed in terms of uh, in terms of that. Some weapons just kind of haven't uh, kind of remained the same in that mm -hmm. regard. But then again, here we are in uh, here we are in 2019, still playing Splatoon 2. We thank you for rocking with us, and uh, we know that the uh, that the uh, the Squid Kids are a faithful bunch, and they don't abandon the game all too easily. And certainly. We're still rocking out. We know that there's a lot of focus on a lot of other games, and I've been focusing quite a bit on Smash myself. Yeah. So, uh, but then again, it's always good to go back to Splatoon, and uh, it's always it's it's always uh, it's always a hype thing too. Like you always think like, oh man, I'm, I'm I haven't played this in so long. I don't know if I'm uh, really good to go with this. But then again, mm -hmm. like people who are super competitive with this, first of all, they suffer no such uh, fate. I know that you don't. You did not look rusty at all <laughs> in your uh, in your last set, and, uh, which you won by a score of three to one. Congratulations. Thanks. And I will say uh, it's one of those things that it's so easy to jump back into. It's like riding a bicycle. You just never forget the fundamentals. You never forget the, uh, the After tech. After so long, you just can't. Absolutely, and it's just sort of ingrained into you. Mm -hmm. It's one of the fascinating things. So one of the uh, one of the things that will certainly be uh, evident here is the fact that MKV looking to bounce back and uh, didn't do too poorly in the last game as well. Certainly has uh, talented not. players like Pixely and Raptura on his side. But then again, team that's so uh, certainly one of the people that has proven himself over the past couple of weeks. He wound up. Uh, being your teammate on the uh, Bros Calamity Squall Stars. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, who's been in competitive since Platoon 1, just like me. Um, so he's definitely just as good um, with the amount of time that he's played. Um, more of a mid-range specialist, while you're more a little more up close and personal. Yeah. Um, what can I say about MKV? He's like a monster with the tri or even though he doesn't play it too much. I think that's like, if he's on that weapon, he's going to win, like 90% of the time. Hmm. Sometimes he flexes over to the splatter shot, which is fine, but his tri slash is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looked it looked pretty brutal the last game. Unfortunately, just not on the winning end of things. Mm -hmm. So as we are getting set for game number one between these two sides, MKV and Rapture, and we do see on the top screen uh, that's uh, that's two people playing some Smash Ultimate friendlies, as that's uh, what we have set up on the main stage. Just. Uh, we have Splatoon going off <laughs> on the sides, and that's what we are streaming. So don't get uh, don't get it twisted. Not really much of a show set up here, mm -hmm. uh, but we're uh, we're making things work, and we can't really fit a whole land set up on our stage if we're right. being completely honest. Makes sense. So as we are getting the teams sorted out, it will in fact yeah that's MK uh, Team MKV which we saw. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. Yeah, MKV, Pixley, Raptura, and Snorlax Guy will be the lineup. And 
Of course, uh, Wings, Rakesh, Eris, and that's so are going to make their uh, their on stream debuts here today. What are you expecting from this team? Because it's an interesting uh, makeup. Because we know Rakesh probably going to be playing back line. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so is probably going to be taking up uh, mid and Wings. Of course, I think is a friend of uh, of Raptura's. Friend of that's so Raptura's. One or the other, I'm not sure. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he uses the Splash Shot Pro as well, so just like that, so they might have a, a duo there unless that so decides to change things up. Um, I'm Interesting not composition, to be completely honest, yeah. because I'm not really sure about having two people at mid, although it's certainly not unheard of. With someone in the back as well, in Rakesh. So. Exactly. Um, not sure with Eris plays. Uh, it would be interesting to see once that comes out and shown on screen how that lineup is going to work out. Um, we would almost have to default to being up front. Some people do. Some people uh, choose to be oh. what they're comfortable with. Oh, oh no! I'm uh, I'm actually looking oh. at the info right now, and it's it looks there. like yeah, no, he uh, he plays the end zap. So that's an interesting choice and a very effective choice. It's been effective uh, ever since day one of the game. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. So I uh, certainly expecting big things from this team. However, Team MKV looking to respond again. MKV a monster on the tri slosher as you uh, yeah. as you mentioned, Pixely has been bouncing back and forth between weapons, has since settled on the Blah Blobber. One thing I've noticed is consistent is the Curling Bomb with Pixely. So uh, the weapons might change here and there, but usually they have Curling Bomb uh, equipped. So it always uh, helps them skate by and get through, do a surprise attack, attack in the back. And folks, here we go. It's uh, We are in the Battle Dome and Kelp Dome. Two, mu two teams enter, one must leave. Okay. Here we go with game number one. So right away Going we see the same weapons. double uh, sloshing machine, double dualies over on the team of uh, MKV. Very interesting. Um, kind of all midline, backline. Um, that's so picking up the L3 nozzle nose, which I believe has a uh, burst bomb and baller. I believe so, so. They all go down right away. That's so kind of in there and doing some work. An early, uh, early start to the proceedings for Team That's So. They will wait no longer. They will take control and get that early lead. Crucial in Kelp Dome, but then again, with how many uh, routes that you have to cover, oh. certainly not an impossible proposition to take things back over. However, they're going to need to get back to the zone very quickly and with, uh, with extreme he's prejudice. The, he's got that bomb rest ready, but uh, on the side of the James... Uh, that's so. Has the uh, ink armor right equipped right now. So bomb rush might not be too effective with this ring cloud coming in though. It will strip that ink armor pretty easily, uh, and they do seem to pull it back with the combination there. Oh, beautiful bomb thrown to take out Rakesh, who maybe got a little bit antsy with his backline weapon. He said that he was going to use the ballpoint splatling to me, and uh, he's going to push MKV forward. Wings will kinda, with those splat bombs. They're kind of pushing a little bit too far though. Suction bombs. Um, they seem to be. Find their way back into the game here. Does take out the inkjet very skillfully. MKV showing that he is a man of uh, not just the tri right here. That, indeed, and he is using the uh, the Dooley Squelchers to uh, incredible effect. So it's a very close game here. Uh, blue team Raptor MKV has to t take the zone for. Two more seconds just to continue that, but they do get the penalty put on. Unfortunate, but looks like Rapture is on a some sort of mission. <laughs> oh yeah, surprise! <laughs> well, yeah, that's a splash matic to the face. That's not going to tickle, and it will in fact take you out. Does now they're just the, a couple uh, seconds away from losing the penalty. MKV gets taken out. That could be uh, what allows uh, Wings' team to get on the board even more. They got a, a bomb rush coming in, hoping to neutralize the zone, but Wings Ow. does pull off that flank. Un goes unnoticed, even though he was seen quite a while ago. On a tear right now is Wings. I mean, the streak that he has been on has been nuts, and wisely using those suction bombs over the over the little uh, barricade that he's got going on there. And five seconds away from a knockout victory, and they will, in fact, get it. That is game number one, and MKV... Uh, could have just had their wings clipped by Team That's So. And uh, indeed, wings with that front line play, essential to that, uh, central to that uh, knockout victory. Mm -hmm. that's so, so I did notice that they had a couple chances to get back in. Might have been a few uh, 
opportunities there for that Sioux team to get back behind them, which did happen about two or three times uh, throughout the match. Kind of unfortunate. Got to pay attention to all things that's going on there, not just focusing on, you know, doing a side solo mission. Uh, kind of doing one thing, but having three things in your mind that you could be doing. Indeed, and play. that's been one of the problems with, uh, with, excuse me, with the MKV's team has been just that lack of focus. And I saw that you uh, were taking advantage of that a few times in your 3-1 victory over MKV's team where they would kind of get a little caught up mm -hmm. in the uh, in the one-on-one -on -one engagements and lose sight of the objective. I mean, what is the best remedy for that, in your opinion, just in terms of uh, in how you approach the game? Yeah, so like I said, I always have a couple things in my mind that I could be doing. Even though I might be doing one, I'll be like, okay, wait a minute, they have, this, they have the zone currently, and we have to do that. But if I don't get this person first, maybe that could cause problems later. So I always have these couple scenarios in my head. I'm um, just trying to figure out which one is the most important right now or what which ones can my team take care of while I do something else. Um, of course, it's all solo. It doesn't really reflect into the entire team, so you really have to be all on the same page to pull it off. Uh, so it can be quite tough in that regard. And it's one of those things that, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of newer players will struggle with it, and you never really know the quality of player that you're going to get mm -hmm. when you uh, when you come to a draft event like this. But at the same time, it's uh, one of those things that you really do kind of have to uh, snap your fingers and say, hey, man, wake up. We're, uh, we're in this. Yeah. We're playing. That's what I was doing with one of my teammates, Infinite Omega, um, always explaining to him, uh, <laughs> you know, that was a good play, good call out there, blah, blah, blah. Hey, can you watch this part of the map for the next 10 seconds or 20 seconds? It worked out really nicely. So Yeah. No, and that's uh, sometimes that's what you have to do is uh, then they'll get the feel for the game <laughs> themselves. And it's and not even that. It's like even if it – Maybe the right or wrong call, at least you're all on the same page doing the same goal, and it should work out. <laughs> Even Generally, if it's not speaking. the most optimal play. But. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's going that. to be uh, yeah, team that's so going up one to nil as a result of a knockout victory on uh, Kelp Dome Splat Zones. Mm -hmm. Going to the reef for Clam Blitz. Now, this is an especially interesting map for Clam Blitz because you have uh, obviously it's been revamped and retooled mm -hmm. a little bit over the past few months as we get set for game number two we'll see the team compositions here and uh, how is the how is the change of the map changed how people approach uh, approach this zone uh, particularly for this mode yeah P particularly for this mode I'm not too sure I don't play solo too much um, but one change that I've noticed is on the right side of the map uh, towards your close or something um, usually the path that they take Rainmakers through or in tower control where you flank, um, that's been opened up a lot more. And there's a lot less options when you're defending uh, to get away from there and get your opponents out of there. So that'd be interesting to see if the big clams go through that right side uh, where it's a little bit tougher to defend. You know, we were talking about Wings and That's So potentially going to Splattershot Pros, but no, That's So is uh, going with this. Oh, excuse me, with the L3. Nozzle Nose. Yeah. Snorlax guy and... Uh, Snorlax guy and what is it? What a Rapture? Yeah, no, it's not, not not Raptura. Pro, Forge Pro, Snorlax. Yeah, two Forge Pros on the opposite side. Interestingly enough, and we were debating them what would happen with the other one. Pixely is going to baller himself right into uh, harm's way, and he's really good in these tight spaces. So they really do have to watch out, but they will draw first blood with the help of that uh, baller ingress. Rakesh cleaning things up. So there will be no further scoring on this one, but the first blow has been struck. Advantage for uh, Team Green with Snorlax Guy, and indeed Raptura. with Raptura. So very interesting there. They took it right to that closed area right away that I was talking about in the beginning of the game. Uh, they could have made the push a little bit more effective. I couldn't see exactly how they were stopped uh, besides your Kess just being there. Um, so I feel like that push could have been a little bit, you know, got a little bit more out of that, but. They did what they could. At the end of the day, points are points, and kills are kills. That's so looking for everything he can possibly get out of this inkjet. He'll get uh, an assist as well as a kill. So they got a good push going on here. They got two power clams on the field, um, two down on the side of MKV. Um, looks like they respawned. Uh, they waited a little bit too long, respawned, and were able to get some counter kills. Raptura going back to that familiar sloshing machine that we've seen him put in some work with in the past and used to be a specialist before moving on to other weapons. I mean, he's definitely uh, the unconventional player, mm -hmm. to say the least. And Raptura, although he will be uh, 
eating a, eating a burst bomb. It's not exactly a uh, healthy, nutritious meal for him. The barrier will be broken, so we're going to see things get tied up and eventually the lead get taken. And now it's MKV's team striking back. So they did a little bit of sneaky maneuver. On the back maneuver. foot, I should say. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of sneaky maneuver, make sure they don't get revealed from the power clam. Uh, they just made a nice passes all the way to the goal. Unfortunately, they weren't able to capitalize more on that, but they did pull the lead. Wings doing some work with those dualies pursuing. Oh, but he could have <laughs> right into a wall of splat bombs, well evaded, however, and eventually getting the kill. I mean, that's the... Uh, those Kensa dualies certainly have uh, been one of those weapons that have changed the the, the whole Kensa line yeah. has changed how the game is played just a little bit. But uh, what in your mind has been Ooh. the biggest difference as once again a score from Team Matso. And oh my gosh, all of the clams just piling in. Rakesh and that so went in nearly undetected and that will be a team wipe. But the damage has been done. That was a super good push. I didn't expect you could, uh, I didn't even know you could throw the clam from down there, so. <laughs> Yeah, the more you know, and you know what? That's uh, that's what happens when you keep up with the latest fashion trends. You got a Kensa weapon on your side, and all of a sudden the game has changed, and that's what uh, we're going to go back to that. How has the Kensa weapons changed the game in your mind? Um, what's what's been the biggest change? Yeah, some of them are good, some of them are uh, not so good. The most, the one that sticks out to me the most is uh, Kensa slashing machine or slashing machine. Um, it just has so much power in uh, splashdown and the fizzy bombs. There's so much area of effect damage that. Um, even if it lands one shot on you or one fizzy bomb hit, it can really win a trade uh, or better. So it's definitely performed in the top 10 of the rank Ooh. rankings. It's appeared two or three, four times on the top 10 X rank leaderboards every month uh, since it came out. So. Ooh, speaking of peak performance, that's, that's so with three of those four kills in that team wipe and all of a sudden it's over. Yeah, it is over. That's so putting in that work, decimating the defense. That's Stingray finishing the jump for the team wipe, and that allows the knockout blow to be administered, and that's so up 2-0. Yep. So I think that so just ran in there, got uh, two isolated uh, double kills, and that just basically paved the way for the rest of the team to come in there with all the clams that they've gathered, knock it right out. And you saw three of those four players in double digits. That's so... Uh, Three of those kills coming out at the crucial time and uh, 16 overall in the game and uh, well earned for Team That's So. And now all of a sudden it's going to be MKV, Raptura, Pixely, and Snorlax guy on the back foot. They're going to have to reverse 3-0. And we were talking about how uh, hard it is to do in Smash Brothers earlier uh, okay. earlier on in the week, specifically yesterday at the laboratory, which you can watch, twitch.tv slash Clash Tournaments. I have to get the plug in. What can I say? Hey, do it. <laughs> yeah. It's this. It's it's this stream. So, go and yeah, plug it. fair enough. I mean, it, Bros Calamity is is a Smash Brothers reference, in and of itself. So something to be said about that. However, uh, it's even. I feel like it's even harder to do in Splatoon because you have to Come really back. coordinate and you have to navigate the uh, the now bruised consciousnesses. Yeah. Of th of four people has been done uh, in many tournaments, particularly particularly at the end of finals. Uh, you know, double elimination, team comes back. Usually, it does get to that game five or game seven, and that's the really close one where it can falter either way. Uh, but it can happen, um, and it did start to happen in the last set that we had. Um, they started to come back on this set game. So if they can keep that momentum up through that game five, maybe it's. Maybe it can happen. You did a pretty good job of squelching that, though. So, <laughs> hey, well that done. was Baki. That was all Baki. Yeah, I mean, hey, he's a he's a talented player, and we're certainly going to be seeing more of him. And what is it in your estimation that your team has done so well throughout this tournament? Because we know how good you are up close. I mean, you're you're pretty much mm -hmm. you're either getting a trade or getting an outright kill. Like I like to use the snake in the grass analogy yeah, with you I've quite a bit. That. Heard that a lot. <laughs> um, I just know Baki's really aggressive. So when it, when he can make a play, he does it, and he does it well. Uh, Chins plays Jet Squelcher with uh, Stingray most of the time, um, which is just unbeatable in a lot of cir circumstances. Sounds um, suffocating, honestly. Playing against them for you know a couple months now, I've I've realized that they're definitely a <coughs> force to be reckoned with. Um, glad they could get them on my team. And then of course yeah. Infinite Omega pulling out some good strong plays, really unexpected from you know newer player to Splatoon. He showed me gear sets that he got, got those all situated. And it's the instincts. Yeah, gotta trust them sometimes. Like a like a 
well, like a squid Jedi almost. You got to train them, you got to hone them, but you got to trust your instinct. <laughs> yeah, he is. Oh, he is a call. He is a Call of Duty player. It, it explains why he's uh, why he's pushing Mountain Dew uh, energy drinks on me. It is. Uh, it's actually not half bad. It tastes. Yeah, it tastes a little bit like carbonated Mondo, if you know what Mondo is. No, it's like a dollar store juice drink that I used to drink growing up, because I'm hood as Ooh. heck. Anyway, we're going to Wahoo World, man. This is uh, a... Bamboo? Yeah, neat little, <laughs> neat little spot James? for family vacation. However, the bamboozler is certainly not what you want to see at Dorney Park. Especially wielded by that, so can pull out so many weapons. Uh, sometimes it pays off. A yeah. lot of times it pays off. Um, going long range for this one. A little bit of experimentation. Did many people good. That's so. He's going to get tagged from the side by Pixley. However, uh, Pixley will get the favor returned to him by Eris with that vanilla splatter shot pro. Still an effective weapon after all this time. Yep. So a lot of stuff happening at the start here. Specials all within 25 seconds here. Um, a lot of splats going on. Eventually, uh, the push does look like it gets stopped uh, by that so's team, and they're able to stop it before it gets a little bit too out of hand. What I'm noticing here, it looks like a custom blaster and a uh, hero splatling replica. Oh, look at you. You cleared story mode. How fancy. But Ooh. that's so. Putting in that work with the bamboozler and would not expect him to be uh, so in your face and seems to be a little out of his element. However, could not tell in that exchange. Raptura simply not able to get the best of him. Yep, looks like they're getting a, a good decent number of splats here. Able to push the tower past the lead. If they clear the checkpoint, that's even better. Uh, they're continuing the there pressure up, which is wonderful. They still got the Stingray ab uh, available, so one oh. player can jump off while Kesha uses Stingray, so they got a lot of options as long as they keep the calls alive and the, the splat's going on. That's a lot of purple ink ahead of them, Rakesh. And that's so doing that work. That's so just tagging people with the bamboozler. And with all the opportunities that they've had to take back the tower, Pixelian and company simply not able to do it until just there. The damage has been done. It has the counter ticking down. The scoreboard will show 79 to 29 at this juncture. Amazing stuff from that Sewing Company and working in such a tight space with uh, limited numbers, still somehow able to get the job done. That could be the difference maker in this match, buddy. Yeah, so a lot of stuff has to happen now for uh, Rapture's team to come back. This is the game three, um, so it could be the, the deciding game. Um, I can tell that they, they want to win because uh, they're coming back with quite a force right now, about to reach their high score or whatever. Um, Looks like it's getting halted for a, a brief moment here, though. Special's coming out. Looks like uh, the next they got the ball point. I forget exactly which one that is. I think it's a ring cloud. Um, not enough, so looks like it is uh, that's those team time to come back in. Yeah, and they will lose the tower. I mean, effective defense sometimes can just be the best offense, and yes. indeed it is. The tri slosher will take out uh, will take out Eris eventually, but. I mean, that is an effective composition with the uh, Splatter Shot Pro, which just got taken out, Bamboozler. So one thing, and one thing MKV's team d definitely has to keep in mind, especially this uh, kind of late into the game, is even if they want to make a push, they have to make sure Rakesha and James are down because their specials can be quite potent uh, right at the end of the game, especially towards overtime. Stingray and a Burst Bomb Rush can just shut down that tower. Uh, no questions asked. Need to be careful. That's a Splatling charging up. Wings with the inkjet just in time. Smartly done, however, into an absolute bevy of green ink. And they will lose the tower there, however. Always good to just push it into the zone because that tower is not going to reset very quickly. And now it's... Uh, keeping up the pressure. Yeah, keeping up the pressure. But they keep getting pushed back. The line is very heavily in the zone of Pixely and company. And for some reason, just uh, not enough being done with. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's the the ballpoint not doing uh, not doing enough. Maybe too much of a focus on offense as opposed to uh, as opposed to land coverage. But there I'm seems to be a lot of purple ink in their half of the field. I'm not too sure if it's any individual here. It looks like a that's those team just being everywhere on the map. So you see always that a uh, splatter shot pro always being on a flank or somewhere forward. You always see the ballpoint or I mean the. Splatling always being somewhere in the anchor position. 
Uh, and then James is always being kind of forward with the bamboozler. Not sure if that's how you're supposed to play, but it's working out. Yeah, something is definitely working. It's absolutely suffocating on the part of Team That's So. so and MKV just has not had a response. Right around this time of the game is when, uh, if I was MKV's team, I'd be super scared. You know, you got to make a 50-point push in the next 15 seconds. That's not going to happen. Oh. You, you're going to need that overtime. If you look over at the specials, Rikesha has that Stingray charge, and this can quickly be the demise of MKV. Oh, and there comes the... Uh Everyone's favorite, the GG Ray, which they're going to have to lose a couple of numbers. However, they do survive the uh, bevy of ink, but not for long. Eris will take the initiative and take the game, and that is going to be a 3-0 victory. That's so, just so good. Yeah, nothing you can really say about that other than uh, that's his team just always had the upper hand in almost pretty much every situation across those, all three games. Eris actually doing a lot of work there with the uh, pro, which is amazing with how much they were in yeah, there. 24 splats. Um, I saw them jump back a couple times, so it does look like they were being smart while they played, but in the end, definitely aggressive. Yeah, but it was that mid-range play that wound up making the difference, mm -hmm. and ultimately, even though MKB, 16 splats with the tri slosher himself, I mean, tip of the cap to them. It's not like they were... Uh, it's not like it was from a lack of effort, yeah. but ultimately just could not withstand the onslaught, the uh, the offensive pressure that uh, Team That's So was providing. So a 3-0 victory for Team That's So. They're looking to go undefeated, but they'll have to do so at the hands of Team Muddy. Who yeah. knows? So we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, I've got no, uh, no, no comment on, you know, who's going to do what. We'll just see it after the, after the games. <laughs> this is the truth. So, uh, folks, once again, thank you for joining us here at twitch.tv slash bros underscore calamity. If you're watching this on the VOD channel, youtube.com slash bros calamity, hit that subscribe button. Certainly appreciate you doing so. And if you uh, if you want to do so, then uh, check out results from past tournaments as well, where we have streamed a match, an exhibition match, with you uh, teaming up with that. So, the take on yep. Empire Arcadia. It was a nice little 3-0 victory. Um, but, uh, yeah, shout-outs to our uh, friends up in New York and really all around the world. Uh, for uh, for tuning in for that one, and uh, we, I've been hearing rumbles that Oblivion. Uh, he actually contacted me recently. Is he saying he wants the rematch? <laughs> let him have it. I don't know. Let him have it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll let him know. We'll, we'll have to see what happens at the later at a later date. Yeah. But folks, coming up next, it's Team Muddy Junior versus Team That So. It's going to determine who comes out of this thing undefeated. You're not going to want to miss it.